Hi, Mike from the Rural Montana family. In this video, we're tackling the TPMS problem on our 2013 Tesla Model S with 193,000 miles on it. Let's go. For the retrofit from the Bao Long TPMS right here to the Continental, there's a service bulletin that is actually online. This here is a revision 2 from 2016. I believe there's more revisions. Uh, I think there's even one from 2018. Um, it may have updated part numbers or something in there but the process is described in here what to do what to look for and that's basically what we need we need to know how we are going to do all this and there's an accurate description down here it lists all the parts and there's two options one says to replace module only, the other one says to replace module and ECU. Uh, so you will have to actually find the harness um, and look if the harness has a certain plug. If the plug is there, you gotta only do the module. If the plug is not there you also have to replace the harness so we got to find that first to figure out what parts we need and let's scroll down a little more so down here it will explain exactly what to do and uh, disconnect 12 volt power remove the right hand sill trim panel and then again refer to service manual procedure blah 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 so you can find the service manual online unless you already purchased one. I'm going to put a link down in the description where you can find one online for free to access. So um, anyway, we got to remove that right hand sill trim panel, inspect the right hand main harness. And if there is a four pin connector, I'm not sure if you can see that there's a little connector in the picture there. Uh, secure to the harness with white tape continue to the retrofit module only section um, if there is no four pin connector skip to the retrofit module and harness section so obviously uh, we would like to see that plug but I kind of have a feeling that the plug won't be there because this is a relatively early model s so I assume this will also need the harness. But first we gotta remove the right hand sill trim panel. This here is the area we're going to be working in. So we're on the right hand side of the car. That is always looked at in driving direction, main driving direction forward. So uh, right hand side would be passenger side. And this part right here, this is the sill panel that we need to get off and the harness is under here and we need to check it for that four pin plug. So I did refer to the service manual here. Um, for some reason that procedure number actually shows the left hand rear trim, which right hand side is just the opposite side, but it works basically the same. And sure enough, it uh, refers us right away remove to C post left hand rear trim remove to C post left hand upper trim which is basically just left hand rear trim left hand upper trim so then we gotta go here and uh, gotta follow these instructions for the one gotta follow these instructions for the other and we probably have to get into this a little deeper here um, seems like it's not as easy to get to as I wish. With many cars, you can literally just pull that trim off and see the harness underneath. But here, we gotta go uh, do a few extra steps, it seems like. But again, you can access that 
service manual online the link is down below in the description so this here is the right hand side door that we have open and i believe right under here that's where we need to get to but it just doesn't peel off as easy as i think i would like um, it seems like we gotta start back here somewhere peeling all this off to eventually get under here get this off so i guess we'll just do step by step and see if we can get under there so we gotta start here with this piece this needs to come off first there's a single screw right under there which uh, it's a torx t25 Uh, if we can get on it There we go And then this just pulls off It's got a bunch of clips basically all these panels are kind of clipped on like this so now next step okay the next piece to come off supposedly this one uh, that should be all only clipped on and we should be able to pull that off there we go Again, it had these clips and I think there's a pin which is probably still here. Yep, that's still stuck in there. So we'll uh, remove that with a uh, panel uh, tool to pop it out and push it in there. It'll probably be easier to insert it that way. We'll see when we get there. This should come off next. Let's see if we can get this kind of out of the way here. And it says use outward pressure, which I assume is going actually towards the inside, but maybe not. It could also be this way. Uh-huh, it sure doesn't want to do anything. They say to use a tool, so we'll see if we can get in there and pry a little bit. Sure does not just pop loose. <laughs> Maybe it's from back here. I prefer not to break it. Yeah, that doesn't want to pop just loose like they say. I'm gonna go double check. So to get this bolster off, they say put something in here to wedge it out, reach in and uh, release the upper anchor. So 
Um, <laughs> well, I went in there with this to bring it out. Couldn't see what I'm even looking for. You gotta force it quite a ways. Eventually you'll see this white thing right there. And that's the thing you need to release. The question is, how do you release it? It says use a screwdriver or some pliers. And uh, I don't know, eventually I was able to pop it loose. And then once you got it loose, it just pulls up. Looks like there is a... <coughs> there's a plastic piece there. And this plastic piece is still stuck in there. But uh, so in the process, there's a, a metal piece in here, a rod. I believe right in there and I bent it out a little um, still not sure how I was supposed to release this here uh, I tried to grab this and pull it to release it push it every which way um, it eventually broke free so I uh, chewed this here up a little bit but uh, that doesn't matter too much um, since we're gonna put this bolster back over it and uh, here this will bend this back so it will sit flush again that's not too big of a deal so we're coming closer I can see some wiring down here anyway now we got to move on to the next step so it talks about removing the C post middle trim which I'm not sure if this they're talking about this right here Or if this is part of it it says use a tool doesn't pop this way <laughs> huh. I think I should be able to get this whole piece out. Let's pull this off. coming closer can't really so this is all loose so this is attached to this go not sure if this was what they meant but it's off <laughs> so I think I think this here this here is that harness we're looking for I think and well, they were talking about, let's get some light down here. White tape, there's black tape and the white plug. But I sure don't see white tape and a black plug like it showed. in uh, the picture 
So I got a feeling that we need to replace this harness. Which that's no fun. Should be somewhere in this area, I believe. If I interpret the pictures right, somewhere here is actually where that module goes. So it looks like we'll have to do lots of fun and replace this whole harness. It goes up in here. Uh, so I gotta take all this apart all this and it goes quite a ways back there so uh, but I don't have the parts yet since I didn't know what parts I really needed but in this case we need a harness and the module everything and then also the four TPMS sensors so for now um, I'm gonna leave this all apart, get the parts ordered and just not use the car until we have the parts. And once I get the parts, then I tear the rest of it apart, put the harness in, put the module in and do these steps. And then I still have to have uh, the four wheel sensors installed, which requires basically uh, pulling the tires off, putting the new sensors in, putting the tires back on. So there's quite a bit of work to do in this case, but for now, we gotta order the parts. <laughs> 